In this video we'll look at how to use the scene editor and the material editor and how to select par parts of your object um, using those two uh, menus. So in the scene at the moment we've got uh, the grey alien that we use in the point by point modeling videos and it's made up of three objects which is the head section here, the eyeball and the eye corner. It's instance mirrored across the center axis there so all of this side including this eye and uh, the head are all just instances at this stage. So if we look at the scene editor that you can get up by using um, editor options scene editor like so we have it over here um, and look at the first bit which is scene which you can use a little plus and minus to open and close like so and then in this scene we've got the grey alien head and I click on it once and it selects it the eyeballs selects it and the eye corner and that selects it so instead of doing what I'm doing here which is clicking in the scene I'm literally clicking it via the scene editor and that's very useful when you get a complicated scene so clicking inside the scene um, you can quite often select the wrong object so using the scene editor here quite simply you just select the one you want. So looking at these buttons over at this side if I stay on the grey alien head and I click this first button here you'll see a couple of things have happened so one everything in the scene apart from the grey alien head has gone to wireframe and also over here you'll see uh, on the far right of the screen where my mouse is that it's locked the other two, le the other two objects so the eyeballs and the corner I now can't edit at all so we go back to grey alien hit again that unlocks them and it, it brings them back to true full visibility so if we look at the next one we have here we click that and that sends us to ghost shaded which is useful for the point by point editing click it again that sends us to wireframe as you can see it sent both sides the instance side as well to wireframe click it again and it goes to flat shade mode and here we've got the model is subdivided just once so if I just show you unsubdivide it with V you can see there that's showing as the flat shaded unsubdivided I'll just subdivide it again and then go back to smooth shade like so the eye turns off visibility for that layer completely for that model uh, for that object completely to switch that back on so we can quickly run through a couple of them on the other ones so switch off the eyeballs switch them back on change the eyeball to ghosted wire flat smooth and then the eye corner on and off and you'll see it changing here in the corner on and off and you can individually lock the layers so you can't now edit them or touch them in any way and then unlock them with that. So that's a great way to handle different objects in your scene. So down below it here again we can plus and minus it to open and close it we've got um, the groups. Now a group is a selection of components that you've uh, assigned a group to and how we do that is first of all we'll go to face mode we'll just use the selection tool we'll select across the head and then just individually select those points so I've selected that entire skull cap there and we go to selection group selection and you can see there now I've made a new face group down here at the bottom obviously I've already got this group but uh, there's no reason why we can't do this so I edit that and we'll just call it test group because we won't be keeping it and what that does for us now is if I hit test group that will select everything that's in that group as you can see click away click again selects everything in that group now all of these above it are the ones that are already preset so if you quickly run down them we've got the eye inner ring which is in here selects that ring all the way inside the eye ring which is the outer ring selects that cheek forehead nose cavity which is the in inside the nose the mouth inner mouth lips chin 
neck, head, head side, head skull cap, eye pupil, eye iris, and the eye corner. Now that's a great way when you're in the middle of modeling to quickly work or isolate um, a portion of the model. So if you were to select the um, cheek, for example, like so, and if we go up to display, and if we select hide selection or hide unselected, so we'll say hide unselected, that gives us on that particular model everything but the cheek has now disappeared. So we could work just on that. And again, if we wanted to remove those eyeballs and the other ones, we would just click off the visibility there. And that gives us the ability just to work on that, that area. Switch everything back on, go to display, show all. So again, we can go to, if we literally wanted to work on the lip area here, so we could individually select all the points, which would take a long, long time, or we could go mouth, lips, selected, display, hide, unselected, and again, there we just have an isolated mouth area. Okay, so we'll just display, show all. So that again, it's a very powerful way of selecting all of your individual components as you can see just one more time let's run through all the different components if i wanted to select multiples it's hold down shift and we could select everything we want to isolate or work on like so so we could for example if i want to just keep the neck the chin and the head side and the skull cap and then display hide unselected that just gives me the skull cap completely skull head side completely and hides the face so if we go to display show all and it's all back again so that's uh, an indication of how to set a group and how to use groups if you um, you, you would um, as I've already said, select the areas you want to add to the group and then um, use selection group selection. Okay, so on this side of the screen, on the left hand side, we've got the material editor open. And I've left it open on this side because I wanted to show it in conjunction with um, the scene editor as well. So, first of all, if I was to now um, select this nose area, so nose like so and what we've got here is a color defined as the nose which is here now I'll just change that to show you so I'll change it to a bright red color and you'll see exactly what I mean so I've changed that color there and it's changed the nose color here to bright red you can change quite a few of the settings so you've got an ambient color so you can add ambient underlying color like so you can make it specular by adding a uh, the specular highlight to white it gives it a very specular look as you can see and also emissive and the amount of shininess you can change also in this screen you can if you've got UVs applied you can add a texture which we're not going to cover in this video uh, with these buttons here now what you can do is if you um, are working around your model and you want to select something that's got a particular material on it, you can just use select by, select by which is here. So if we hit the nose and then select by, it does exactly the same as we did over here. But instead of using the groups, it uses anything that's got a material applied to it. So if we use nose cavity, select by, it selects that inner area in here want to use eye ring you select by and it selects that ring there okay so if I was to um, take the skull cap and change that color to all green hit OK you can see the change it's made on the top change the ambient to white that will brighten it up slightly change the specular to white it gives it a nice shiny effect on the skull cap there. If I want to select that skull cap, we'll go to head skull cap select by and that gives you that selection. If I want to select the skull cap a different way, I'll go back over here to scene editor and hit skull cap and it selects it in the same way. 
So as you build a model, which I didn't do with this model uh, when I built it um, for the video, um, you can uh, define the individual areas as you go along. So as you make this eye ring, you could call it um, a group, define it in the scene editor, give it a um, material, um, and then uh, basically change its parameters in there. So let's just give you a quick example of how we'd do all of those. Uh, we've already done the grouping, so I'll quickly show you. Um, I'm going to change, I'm going to select down here. All the way along, I'm just literally doing it point by uh, face by face. Okay, so I've selected that, which is, um, I think it's called the stenocleomastoid, certainly in my country anyway. So, if we selected this, first of all, we'll do selection, group selection. It gives us a new face group down here on the right. So, I'll double click that. We'll just call it mastoid for now. And that gives us the ability to select it as a group as you see so we'll click off just to show you onto other areas but then back to the mastoid we can still select the neck underneath it if needed and we can still select the cheek in front of it and we can still select the neck side at the back so this mastoid is part of those groups as well so if we go back over here to the materials and we hit new Give it a colour that's distinctive for us, so we'll give it a bright yellow colour for now. Click OK. Um, and then hit Apply. And you'll see the material down here. So if we go call it Astoid and Enter, we've got the material down here at the bottom left, and it's given it that name. So now, the same as every other part, we can literally select by scene editor as you can see oops let's move that by mistake or we can select by hit the mastoid material and go select by and it does the same job as you can see and you can carry on working around split it down as much as you like um, that's pretty much how we would use the material editor select to how to select as well